Awesome. Hello, everyone. My name is Aspen Limblu. <laughs> You guys are so nice. You guys are so nice. Um, my talk today is on how a diverse workforce provides a competitive edge. That's just you know fancy jargon for having a diverse workforce is actually profitable. So a bit about me. I am. Uh, I work at CrowdStrike as a threat analyst. I'm currently the vice president of women in cybersecurity, uh, and I love bullet points. <laughs> I'm a technical person. I'm not really creative or graphic. Cool. So I will use bullet points frequently and often if I can. <laughs> uh, so when I started out, um, diversity is really important to me. And so when I wanted to do this talk, I wanted to look at like the, the, the profits, the money, the bottom line, because, you know, you could talk about how great diversity is, but your businesses won't buy into it unless you show them the money. As Cardi B says, all I want is the money. So <laughs> I love Cardi B. Also, I should have put that in here too. <laughs> um, so that is what I focused on today. So when I was looking up, looking up diversity and profits, I came across this quote about having diversified investments. And it made sense. You know, the advice for investing is have a diverse portfolio of stocks, of bonds, and of uh, mutual funds, even. You know, that way you're protected against, you know, any downturn in the market. But of course, I made the mistake of ignoring said advice because I was all about, you know, going to the moon on these penny stocks, you know, Lambo dreams. Instead, I cried because I lost all my money <laughs> and <laughs> lost it all. And then I wasn't profitable until I made a diversified portfolio. So companies like this might have the same thought process of diversity. That's just a social thing that there's no real profits to be gained in it. But actually, there's a lot of money when it comes to diversity. And I'll explain that right now, actually. Let's go right into the negative bottom line impacts on not having a diverse workforce. And these are kind of dense, but I'll go over them. So companies in the bottom quartile for both gender and for ethnicity and race are less likely to be, to be profitable. Under equal performance of companies in the same industry and in the same countries implies that diversity is a competitive differentiator, uh, shifting the market share towards immerse, uh, more diverse companies higher turnover costs, that's just, you know, a given, and increased lawsuits on sex, race, age, uh, and religious discrimination. So that was pretty interesting. And I wanted to go down that road a little bit. So then I looked up into like the late, like the past year of headlines. You hear about, you know, Riot Games. Ooh, I love League of Legends, but Riot Games, come on. You know, an Uber, how they had uh, workplace harassment before and after their IPO, and their IPO actually is they're they're thirty percent under their stock price right now. Thirty percent under their IPO. We work. Oh my gosh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there. But I mean, they they had you know issues with discrimination, really toxic work work culture, and a lot of other things that you know played a part with their IPO even being delayed. And then if you go to the EEOC's website, which stands for the Equal Opportunity, I'm sorry, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, you'll see reports like this of them finding companies for, you know, religious dis discrimination, uh, disabilities, race, age, and the fines go from like 20,000 to half a million dollars that they're just dishing out. So can you imagine your company, you know, working so hard on its image, on its brand, on its reputation, getting like getting just smacked in the face with your uh, with bad headlines in the press, bad publicity, bad posts on Glassdoor, getting fined. Like, could your company survive from that? Could they could they turn around from that? I mean, if uh, companies that I've worked at, not a CrowdStrike, I would say the answer is no. That would bankrupt them. That's a huge mistake of them ignoring diversity in the workforce. And so there's some positive bottom line impacts on diversity, of course. Uh, that is, diversity initiatives are proven to have more direct impact on business revenues. You also have uh, diversity initiatives help organizations in attracting high caliber talent with diverse skills and perspectives. Your customer base are also more diverse nowadays. So if your company has a diverse workforce that can identify with its customers, they'll understand their needs. Consumer buying power of diverse groups is significantly increasing and will continue to do so. Having a variety of perspectives increase your company's creativity and enriches decision making. Additionally, the variety of insights expressed helps leaders make informed and responsible decisions. Then you have you know, companies that are in the top quartile for race and, and ethnicity are 
35% more likely to have financial returns above their respective national industry medians. You also have uh, companies who are you know, more diverse genderly, a gender, that's not a word, gender by diversity are 15% more likely to have financial returns above their respective industry national medians. And your threat actors are also diverse. The Capital One breach, by a woman. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not like bragging about that, but like, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not like ethical, but you know, you have female hackers, you, you have, you know, uh, uh, nation state actors targeting like groups in Brazil. You have, um, you know, Russia is a big one too. So like, you can't just have a team that looks and thinks and acts the same way. You need to be diverse in order to combat, just, you know, be profitable and combat your threat actors. So, interesting enough, having diverse leadership teams also, and I'm so sorry, Chris, I know your sunglasses are on because it's bright. <laughs> uh, you know, the diverse leadership teams will, will actually help bring in 19% more revenue than other companies. And so this is important. I think it's because diverse leadership teams will also um, will, will be more open to having a diversity and inclusion program. You know, that not only that, but they're going to be able to have employees that can they, that relate to them, that understand them, that feel comfortable talking to them and working for them. So I'm actually pitching for everyone to have a diversity and inclusion program. And so this is how it's really pretty graphic. I hope you can see it on how how to start that. You know, the, it has to start from the top. You have to have executive buy in. Your CEO, your exec team, they have to believe they have to commit and that commitment will then cascade down. It's, it's so a diversity and inclusion program is a top down, bottom up engagement, like bottom line. If you don't have that, then it's not going to succeed and it's going to fail. And so going over how to launch a diversity and inclusion program is actually pretty complex because you need to make sure that you tailor it to to grow your business and to not and to not alienate any groups that you currently already have in your company. It's a very delicate balance. And going over that actually would be much more longer than a 20 minute you know, talk. So here are some resources that I found online that you can go and look into to help pitch your company to have a diversity and inclusion program. Yes. Yes, of course, because um, I want this to be more like a pitch, a sales pitch for why diversity matters <laughs> in more of a profitable way. And then we have here. So don't take my word for it. You know, we have, you know, cybersecurity companies that have publicly went on record to say that they have diversity and inclusion programs. You have Pablo Alto, Semantic, Forcepoint, uh, Carbon Black and CrowdStrike. And I put them all on here, even though these are our competitors, because I, because I am unbiased. I do like that they went out as a competitor to say that this is important. We crunched the numbers. This this is impactful. And so I was actually you know, looking up uh, top companies for diversity. So Diversity Inc., they have their own list. And Nita B., they actually have theirs for like, you know, top companies for women to work for. You can find all, all kinds of reports like this. These are companies that want to market themselves as you know, diverse because they want to have that talent pool, that diverse talent pool. And let me tell you, I met some women and men who work at Cisco and they, they talk about how happy it is to work there, that, that, that their management is good. And if anything happens, you know, with CrowdStrike and me, I might go to Cisco. Not only that, Microsoft, Microsoft, they, I, I've been, I've been in tech for 10 years, believe it or not. And I, so I've been across, I, I've been, the, I was there for Vista, you know, so, <laughs> you know, and, and, and Teams before it came out, like Teams, but the original Teams, I, and I told them to their face, it was garbage, but their new version of Teams is really good. Like Microsoft, their products are coming out. It's really great. Like the innovation that they have. Like they're pumping money into their research and development teams as well as their employees. And it's obvious because the product that they're making is good. And Microsoft and Cisco, they're not on this list, but they come up often on like top companies to work for it because they're so diverse. Yes, Mary. Yeah, I was just going to say, what is the difference? Because I see my company out there, but it's ranked as seventeen or black. And it, it you know, <laughs> you, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that, but I have a source to this. So they can go to that website and see, yeah. So maybe blue is not good. <laughs> I. I. 
I don't know. And I'm so sorry. I, I should have had that answer. You know, I didn't actually notice the color difference until until you pointed it out. My eyes are bad. Um, so then we have. So if you can't complete, like immediately launch a diversity and inclusion program, you can at least start individually. You know, and that starts off with recruitment. You need to be able to teach your recruiters to check their bias. And Harvard actually has a couple of websites that you can go to to test. They have various bias tests, actually. There's more than one bias test, wow, and that you can go to to take these tests. You want to recruit from diverse talent pools. Now, what, what does that mean exactly? So as a company, you go out there and you advertise to your customers, right? The customers that you want to buy your product. You need to go out there and advertise to the people that you want to apply for your company. You can't just be like, website, here I am. <laughs> Come, come apply. It's like, here, here I am, come buy my product. It's not going to work. you got to go out there and advertise. Uh, you want to hire to expand the team's perspective, not reinforce what's already there. You want to move beyond culture fit and look for culture add because culture fit can actually be exclusionary. You should offer internships, you know, because uh, it's a no brainer. You can then recruit top talent right out of college and not just, you know, the, the universities, but also the community colleges. My husband went to a community college, right? And now look at him. He is a manager at a software billing company, you know? So don't discredit people from, from a, a social, I'm sorry, community college, because they're pretty good too. There is talent, that's, that's right. There is talent at community colleges. Um, and then attend conferences like ShellCon, you know, go out there and say, hey, I'm hiring, I support you, I want to recruit from you. Okay, so after you work so hard to to recruit your employees, you want to keep your employees. So a big thing that you can do is offer a mentorship program. Uh, I'm not trying to brag, but CrowdStrike did that this year and I was a part of it and it was a really great experience and I needed it at the time. I had a mentor who, she helped me overcome my imposter syndrome, you know, and it was good, I needed that at that time. And don't just look for an actual program program. It can be informal men mentorships too. So, uh, so if you see your employees just naturally building Informal, informal mentorship, please, please just encourage that to grow. Uh, nurture that even. You want to build, an, I'm sorry, professional development programs is also really good. And you don't have to actually like, you know, make a program. You can actually sponsor them to go to conferences like ShellCon and attend their workshops at DevCon, at Layer One. Um, these are the things that you can do. You want to also build an inclusive culture where every voice is heard equally and, and is respected. I can't tell you how often I want to speak but I think, will I be, you know, will I be taken like not seriously, you know, and that, and that just from experience being the only woman sometimes in a room full of men who have different views or may have, who may think a certain way about me. So I, I might not often speak up because of that. You should also offer flexible work arrangements. Uh, that's just a thing for now, like not, not a thing, it's a, it's a really good thing uh, to have at your company because if you can offer remote options, like my boys back there from CrowdStrike, isn't it, off, isn't it awesome to be able to work from home and come to the office whenever you want? It's really flexible and it's good for families like me too who have kids who go to soccer for some reason at five o'clock on a Friday night. So, <laughs> so I have to like be flexible and they're flexible with me. And so that is a great way of, of keeping your, your talent because now even though I'm thinking, oh, Cisco, Microsoft, they're good, but crash track though, I can work from home. I can make my own hours. That's keeping me there. That's keeping me here at CrowdStrike. Um, you want to also use exit interviews to accurately identify the cause of turnover. And I suggest using a third party because your soon to be ex employee is not going to tell you the, the straight truth of why they're leaving. So a third party company will be able to capture that data and uh, they, because they don't want to burn that bridge with you. They want to use you again as a reference. And finally, Get involved, become an ally. You know, women in cybersecurity, SoCal. Um, there's also WS, I'm, I always get the acronym wrong, WSC. Oh, or, is it, or is it WCS? Yeah. WSC. <gasps> okay, okay. See, I get them mixed up all the time. There's Dev Colored Lesbians Who Tech. Is I, I like them. They're a great, empowering group, bunch, group of people. You have uh, SWE, you have Women Who Tech, and you need a B, and you should speak up. If you ever see one of your colleagues, Men, male or female, that's that's getting that, that that you think they're getting harsh treatment. Go to that person and educate them, you know. And also go to that person, compliment them, tell them that that they're great, empower them, 
get them over the imposter syndrome because they're gonna have it, you know, being the only brown person or black person or female in a team, they're gonna have that, that sense of imposter syndrome. So if you empower them, they'll come out and do great things and they'll be your friend, like these two guys right there. <laughs> these two guys, they're my allies, what's up? You guys are awesome. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> so diversity in cybersecurity, it is crucial to success. It is profitable, it offers variety, it attracts highly qualified talent pool, it enhances innovation, it promotes equality, promotes a positive culture, reflects your customers, reflects the threat actors, and it definitely requires a top-down, bottom-up engagement. So that is, that is it, and I wanna just say one more thing. A quote from Grey's Anatomy, <clears throat> I believe we can be extraordinary together rather than ordinary apart. That's it. And I have all my sources <laughs> right here. We're done. All right. So sorry. Any questions? I think we, uh, I talked pretty fast. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of what you talked about is how to promote it within the industry. Yeah. Um, what can we do at a university club level? Okay. Oh, man. Why do I go to university? So I'll strike one against me, so I don't have the answer for that. But I suggest you could collaborate with other uh, organizations like WSC, like WESIS, because we definitely will, will want to work with you guys to help either uh, uh, bring events to your campus or help you in terms of st strategic uh, options that you can do to attract more people, uh, a, a more diverse crowd of people to your club. Yes, yes, these two ladies right here, these two. You gotta look up with them. They will help you out. We we need to work together. Yes. How do you how do you shift that to ask, to have men ask women? I don't know. Ask these two guys. <laughs> ask these two guys. I'm putting them on the spot all the time. They're I, I don't I don't know what because I know what you I, I have been there, but for some reason I have people in my company, men and women, coming to me asking me questions, and I'm really honored. I don't know. I guess they feel comfortable coming to me. I don't know how to answer that question. Maybe but maybe they could give you their perspective. Putting you on the spot. Sorry. <laughs> That's a really good, it's a really good answer. Yeah, see, this is what happens when you have a diverse audience that can all collaborate together on, a, on an issue. This is why I love diversity. <laughs>
I know you had a question too. Oh, my question was, where do I get these slides? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to reach out to Lori because I told her that I was going to do this on purpose to put all these links to these slides. And then I wanted to send it to her so she can give it out to you guys. So I don't know how to get it to you directly, individually, but Lori should be the, the one that I'm going to go through to disseminate this information. Yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely not. I, I definitely do. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, sir. Oh, oh. Yeah. And there's just a lot of jerks. There are. So, uh, I, I'm probably not going to stop from everyone. Yeah. Do you think that I'm wasting my time? Or? I, I mean, if you can talk to them in person, that'll be better than, you know, the internet fighting. Uh, you know, because you get a lot of internet keyboard uh, warriors, internet warriors, that's what they're called. Uh, but if you can just have like a sit down with them and talk to them, like actually communicate with them and, and give them like good examples as like what their actions were doing and how it hurt them and how it hurts the business and how it hurts their position too. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know. I've never been on that side. I've always been on the uh, the receiving end of said jerk behavior. And, and I've tried to, I, I don't respond very well, but you know, two wrongs don't make a right <laughs> in that situation. So if you as a, as a third party can come in and just like uh, really try to first coach that person. And if that person is uncoachable, then you can just tell them like, here, I'm going to start writing you up for this behavior. And then you're out. Definitely want to do write-ups because you can't just fire them because then, you know, liabilities and whatnot. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> Interns for 2020. Yes, we are. And uh, we had uh, launched a really successful internship program this year that we're going to do again next year. So if you are interested, hit me up. I can definitely get you in touch with our university recruiters. Is that it? Awesome. Okay, I'm going to end this.